Welcome to this video where we are going to cover getting started with Photo Pro. Um, if you're new to Photo Pro, I just want to thank you so much for purchasing this stack and supporting my work. Thank you, thank you, and I'm really excited for you to use this stack. All right, so first we're gonna cover installation. Um, I will bring up my uh, icons here in the dock. Um, you can take the Photo Pro stack that you uh, get from your download and you can drag and drop that onto the Wrap Weaver 8 icon to install. Oops, I had it there for too long. Let's try that again. So we'll say, um, you know, do you want to install the Photo Pro base? And we say, yes, install. Done. Okay. So now uh, we are going to create a stacks page. I'll put that off to the side for now. Uh, we're going to create a stacks page, open up our library, and just type in photo. And under Photo Pro, we're going to add only one Photo Pro base. Um, only one of these base stacks is used for the page. Uh, if you're familiar with the original photo, program, uh, photo stack, same thing, just add one base to the page, and that is it. Now we're going to add a single photo group. And we'll close out the library, and that is all. Uh, this is the only stacks you need to add to the page. Um, from here, uh, these uh, represent single images. There are three empty images here. If you want to add more, you click this blue symbol and you can keep adding more stacks. So I will kind of run through taking some of these back out. But um, to start adding your images, well first, let's just see what this looks like in preview. So we get three empty boxes. So let's start adding our own images. We're gonna double click on the empty uh, image areas. And all of a sudden, in the stack settings, it has given us new options. Um, so here we have the image source type, whether we're gonna use a stack or a hosted image, which is more of an advanced feature, um, or Total CMS. Um, Total CMS is a product by Joe Workman, which basically um, allows you to create or manage your uh, website um, online, basically. So you can uh, learn more about that with uh, by going to Joe Workman's website and looking uh, for Total CMS if you want to learn more about managing your website completely online outside of Rap Weaver, which is ideal for clients, um, that sort of thing. So, uh, so first, uh, we're just going to go through the easy way of getting started. And uh, so we we're, we're have the input set at stacks. And then we have stack image. So these are drag and drop wells where we can drop in a full image and then drop in our thumbnail. So uh, I'm gonna open Finder here and I already have some uh, animal full size images here. I'm going to, um, let's see here. Let's add in our, our pug. This guy looks cute. We're gonna add him, drag and drop into there. And then for the thumbnail, we have options. Notice how it says generate 400 pixel thumb already here, and this is enabled by default. So by default, uh, Stacks will um, create the thumbnail at, based upon your full size image. Um, but let's say that you're maybe unhappy with the quality of the thumbnail for any reason, and if you don't, if you're not liking what's going on there, um, you can give your, you can put in your own thumbnail. So like, let's say um, I just for purely example, I wanted a, a tiger to represent the thumbnail. Oh, I'm sorry, I got to uh, disable that. So now we have a tiger as the thumbnail, but yet the full size image is the pug. So when you disable uh, stacks from generating the thumbnail and you add your own, you have total control of what that thumbnail is. So um, ideally though, uh, you just want to add a thumbnail that is much, much, much smaller in file size uh, than your full size image. And the reason is when you have a large group of images on a page and they're all full size and have uh, really big file sizes, uh, for the browser to load full size images uh, for the thumbnail, um, it's gonna take a long time. And especially on a mobile device, it's gonna take a really long time. 
So you uh, ba basically want something that is acceptable uh, in quality for a thumbnail, but you really want to get that file size as low as you can get it. And then also if you clear the thumbnail and you uh, have uh, generate, um, have you disable having stacks make the thumbnail, then the full size image will get used for the thumbnail no matter what. So that's how all of that works. <clears throat> but let's uh, add our cute little pug dog back to the mix. Um, now we have the caption. And for this, I'm gonna just do uh, pug dog. So now when we hover over our image, we have pug dog and when we click on it, in the light box, we get pug dog. So anything you add in the caption area will get used uh, for the image in the thumbnail and the light box. But let's say, for example, that you wanted to have pug dog in the light box, but you didn't want it in the thumbnails. Well, you can do that with the uh, clicking the photo group. So not the image, but the group settings and um, changing in the thumbnail caption area we have title options, and then we have caption options. So I can choose to hide the uh, title here. So now when I hover over it, there's nothing. But when I go to the light box, I get Pug Dog. But now below Pug Dog, I see something that says my album. Well, my album is the default name for every photo pro group. So let's say I can name this to, um, uh, let's just say that this is a dog album. Hit enter. So now dog album uh, is the name of the group for all the images. Now you cannot uh, just have nothing uh, because Photo Pro relies on a photo group title in order to operate. This is crucial. Even if you try it, you'll get a little warning that says, please add a title because it's needed. So we'll go back to adding dog album here. And uh, let's even say that you wanted to have the group title inside the thumbnail to be shown. We can. And let's even bring back the dog's name or the name of the image. So we have, whoops, let's uh, see if we can make that thumbnail a little bigger. Let's see here, let's go down, adjust our settings so that we can say even on a laptop, we're gonna have two columns. Let's see what this gives us. There we go. So here we have the dog album and then we have its pug dog, so. You don't, most people uh, end up disabling the uh, group title from be, from appearing in the thumbnails, which is what I prefer too. And so by default, that is uh, hidden and that's how you hide that. Um, but let's say you want to just style this caption in a variety of ways. You're going to, in the thumbnail captions, you have your own style settings. And then also notice that in the light box captions, you have a different set of style settings. So it's possible to have your captions, uh, uh, you get style control separate within the thumbnails and separate for the light box. So that's basically how to set up uh, uh, images with uh, captions. Let's add a few more images just to kind of get this interesting. We're going to, whoops, what am I doing? Forgot how my own stack worked. <laughs> add in the tiger and then we'll add in a hummingbird. And at the same time, we're going to add in those thumbnails as well. Okay. So now we're starting to get something coming together here. And I'm going to uh, take this two columns and put it back to three columns. So in for the photo group settings, I have columns here. Now, this is giving you responsive control over every device. It's saying how many columns are going to be shown. So what's neat about this is uh, I can simply increase that to three for laptop and tablet. And now we have three uh, images. So you have, so it makes responsive column control very, very easy. And then let's say I wanted to 
change. I didn't like the just the super rigid look of just squares. Let's say I wanted to start changing the style. You would do that under thumbnails, layout, and choose something like masonry or justified. And you can really play around with these, but when you start adding a lot of images, you can really see the differences between those three layout styles and they are all great. Um, just choose which one looks best for uh, your photo group. Um, but then we get into the light box. We have some really cool, cool options here. So you can notice in Photo Pro, everything you see in this light box is optional. So uh, for the light box, we have actions and options. Uh, for example, we have the share option enabled. We have the download option disabled. So we're not letting people download the full size image. But if we did want that, we just simply enable that. Then we go back in the light box and now we have a download option. Someone clicks this, they could download that full size image right to their computer or mobile device. And then let's say you're like, oh, well, I like the sharing options, um, but I don't really want to use them for this album. You can disable sharing and boom, it is now removed from the light box. So if you wanted even just uh, to have only your image, you would start, you know, taking these out, taking out the count. And now we're going to have something very minimalistic. And that is it. So you can really uh, control the light box um, experience. And then let's even say that you wanted your um, you wanted to have some kind of control over the color. Well, Photo Pro gives you total color control in the base. The base has settings that are going to apply to all photo groups. So um, when you adjust the light box colors here, all photo groups on the page uh, will inherit uh, those uh, color choices. Um, so some of these options are getting really detailed, but I'm just going to say that you do have color control over all light box elements. Um, even the preloader, um, which is, uh, you don't really see it in Wrap Weaver, but when you're online and uh, Photo Pro is loading those images, you will see that preloader for sure. Um, you do have color control over that. You can adjust how big it is. Um, you can uh, adjust, you know, how wide, you know, your caption area is. You can add copyright info. I mean, there's a lot here. Um, but this is just about getting started. And I just want to let you know that in getting started, if there's colors you don't like, you can change them in the photo base. Otherwise, all of your options um, for a photo group are going to be either in the photo group settings here, or they're going to be on a per image basis here. And that is really it. That covers getting started. So, I mean, now we have three images. If we want to start adding more, we just add some more. And then if you want to add a bunch of images at the same time, because dragging and dropping images one by one does take a little while in stacks. Um, but if you wanted to quickly add a whole bunch of images at once, you want to start using the batch resources um, feature within Photo Pro, where you can literally uh, drag and drop a, a whole folder of images into the Rapweaver resources and then have all those images just instantly load on the page um, in Photo Pro. So uh, there is a whole uh, video walkthrough on the batch resources if that's what you want. And then also at the same time, if you are a big total CMS fan, um, uh, Photo Pro has total CMS baked into it. Uh, not like the service, but you can um, use a total CMS gallery uh, as the photo group, um, even on a per image basis. If you wanted to use uh, a total single total CMS image, you can do that as well here. So total CMS is baked into this too, if you're a big fan of that. Or if you have your images hosted on your server and you just want to use those full size images and those thumbnails and you don't want to bring your images into Rapweaver at all, uh, you can even uh, choose to do that. So a lot of options. Photo Pro is very flexible with how you want to work with images. And uh, that about wraps up this getting started video. Thank you.